Okay, so something that I get asked a lot is how can I do a mail merge using Word and Excel and sending it out as an email? Excel is very popular for putting this kind of thing in, although you can do this from other databases such as Access and also from your Outlook contact list as well. So here I am, I've got a letter that I'm going to use for people that I'm going to send out an invitation to come to an interview. I'm going to put in their name, I'm going to put the address at the top. And I'm going to put in here the date and time of that interview as well. Over here, I've got an Excel spreadsheet with fictitious names and addresses in here, fictitious emails, and also a column here that has send. So this person I happen to know has already said no, so I've put in no there. So I'm not going to include them in the merge, and I'm going to use that as a bit of criteria later on. So a good idea is to close this because Excel doesn't really like it being open when it's going to be used somewhere else. So I'm just going to close it. But it's just a good idea anyway. So here I am back in Word and I'm on my home tab. I'm just going to go to mailings across the top here. I'm going to go to this button here in this start mail merge group. And I'm just going to choose here the email messages option. And you can see it then immediately changes the layout. What I have to do next is choose a list that I'm going to use. It's an Excel list, so I'm going to choose this Use Existing List. You could type a new list, but you've already done it, and it's just time consuming to go and do that now. You could also use from the Outlook contacts as well, if you're using Outlook. And you do need to use Outlook if you're going to be doing this to send out your mail merge as an email. So let's choose Use Existing List, and it's on my desktop. And there it is. I'm just going to double click on address book to open it. There are three sheets here. I happen to know the first one is the one that's got the information in there, my data, and I'm going to click on OK. If I've changed my mind, I want to use a different list. I just go back to my select recipients and choose a different list. I can just go and do that all over again. Let's have a look at this button here, the edit recipient list. And you can see it's telling me the data source, the, all those fields that I've got there, including the email address, which we're going to use later, and the send. And I'm going to put in a bit of criteria right there in a moment using a filter. You may not see everyone, depending on how long that list is. But you could go through and untick people you don't want to include in your mail merge. So we're going to apply a filter so that only people with a Y for yes are in that send column are going to get an email. So. Down here, you'll notice there are six, and you'll see what happens when I apply that filter. Down here is your filter. And over here, I'm just going to choose a field. I'm just going to scroll down to that send one right here. And it's coming up with the comparison equal to. There are all sorts of options. So if you had numbers and things like that, dates, you can have not equal to, less than, greater than, greater than or equal to, or greater than or equal to something such as a particular date. So after a particular date, you might want to filter by that. But we're going to filter just to show those in the send column, which is Y. You can add more in. So I could say Y, and then I could have in here the date, and it could be equal to. And I, or I could have any one of these other options. And I could have put in the date here, so after the 5th of April 2011. OK, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to get rid of that one. Easy to do. I just go back to my field and choose None, and then click OK. They're very quick. It was too quick to see it, but that has filtered down to just five here now rather than the six. So let's click on OK. So that's our Start Mail Merge group. I now want to insert some fields here. So I'm just going to put the address up at the top here. You can do that just by clicking Insert Merge Field, and then you can choose the address, press Return or Enter, whatever you want to call it, down to the next line, which is then City, and then if there was anything else there, I could add it in. Obviously, there would be postcode and things like that if you were popping that in there. I want to put in their first name. Oh, yeah, I want to put their first and last name up at the top. So I missed that. So just make sure the cursor is there at the beginning. Press Enter. Let's put in their first name and then their last name, first name, and then the space, and then their last name. So whatever spaces in there all separate any of these fields. I'm going to write dear first name here. And over here is where I'm going to put the a date. So I want them to come in on a particular date at a particular time. We're going to be able to see a preview to see what this looks like very soon. So there's the time. OK, so I don't have their email actually in there. That's going to come in just a moment. I can preview this by clicking on my Preview Results button here. 
I can then go through that list using these arrows. This one takes me to the very end. These two take me backwards and forwards one at a time. And this one takes me back to the beginning. I can find a recipient. So I can just click there and type in, say, Luke. Press Find Next. And it takes me to that one, just like using Find. So I'm just going to click on Cancel because now I want to finish and merge it together. So I'm just going to click here, Finish and Merge. I could create individual documents for it, which would then create a whole new document with all of them in there. But that's more for the letters. And as you can see, print documents as well is for printing directly without stopping to pause and check them because you've already kind of done that by looking at the preview results. Oh yeah, by the way, when I turn preview results, you just turn it off by clicking on it again. So there you go, that's turned off. And it doesn't matter whether it's on or off when you're then doing this finish and merge. So I want to send email addresses. So I'm just going to click on that. And it's got the message options here. It says email. So it's detected that field because I called it email and it very intelligently worked it out. I'm going to do a subject line, which is interview date and time. HTML will mean that it will include all of the formatting or as much as possible that HTML will allow. So things like bold, italicizing, and fonts and things will all be in there. You could have it as just an attachment. So it just goes a Word document attached to an email. You can have plain text, which look more or less like this because this has got no formatting in it. You could send just the current record, which would be number four here, which I think was Luke Farmer that we were looking at. Or you can choose a number. So just like when you're printing, you can go from one to three because you may not want to send lots out in all in one go. So if you're emailing lots of them out, problems that you encounter are one, it does fill up your outbox and they go one by one. Yeah, I know it seems a bit antiquated, but it actually generates a separate email for each one. So one, your server may not like it. The problem is your server or your email server might detect and think that it's spam. So you might want to do just maybe 50 at a time or 100 at a time. You need to check with your provider or IT department to see what might be acceptable. So that's when you would use that down here. When I click on OK, it's now going to fire up Outlook. It might just do it in the background and your emails will start going. So you would just need to take a look in your outbox to see when they're all done. You might see it takes a while. As I said, they go one by one. So that is how you can send a mail merge out using Word and Excel and sending it all out as an email.